So it says, uh, shown below is a conducting rod that slides along the metal rails. The apparatus is in uniform magnetic field of strength, um, not. Let me just label that. Which is directly into the page. Uh, the rod is pulled to the right at a constant speed um, by some force. Okay. Um, the only significant resistance in the circuit comes from the two ohm resistance. Oh, so it's different from the other setup. What is the voltage induced in the circuit? Um, okay, so that's uh, the easy part. We are just uh, using the uh, Faraday's law. Faraday's law says that the line integral of e dot dl, which should give us voltage, is minus the time derivative of the magnetic flux. And uh, I did this for the other question, but I think it's worth just going through it quickly again, that when you're taking the time derivative of magnetic flux, for a situation like this with the uniform magnetic field and the area that's changing, area in the loop is changing, what this real is, is magnetic field times the time derivative of the area. And for the time derivative area, you have the height times um, the derivative of the horizontal component, which would be the velocity. So this is magnetic field times height times V. It's quite common expression you'll see in this very classic setup. So for the voltage, it'll simply be magnetic field times the height times speed at which you are pulling the rod. Okay, let's figure out the direction of the induced current. So with this rod being pulled to the right, your area is increasing. So with the magnetic field pointing into the screen, um, your change of magnetic flux will be also in the same direction because um, your area is increasing. So uh, the induced current should oppose that change. So um, the magnetic field due to the induced current should come out of screen. So using my shortcut right-hand rule, the current direction of current that would give you that magnetic field is uh, going counterclockwise. So. Okay, so current flows in counterclockwise direction. Oh, and I need to figure out the math. Well, that part is easy. I already have the voltage, and uh, this is the only significant resistance according to the question. So the current should be the voltage divided by the resistance. Um, and oh, force of. Okay, this is interesting. Um, so. So now we are being asked for, okay, with how much force are we pulling? And um, I hope you have a sense that the way the current flows here, really the only length that matters is between the rails. These lengths at the poking out at top and bottom, no current there, so no magnetic force there. So you need the expression for magnetic force, um, not the one for the one on the charge, but magnetic force on a current carrying wire. And if you look through your note or textbook, the, uh, what's derived from the basic QV cross B, it should be I L cross B. Um, here, the direction of current is perpendicular to magnetic field. So, um, um, and yeah, this is the current direction of current to I. So, I cross B, you get a force that's a left toward. So this is the direction of the magnetic force. And what the question is saying is um, this force is equal in magnitude to the magnetic force so that there's a net zero force on the rod. So we would say the magnitude of this is equal to I L B so that it, um, so that it, um, uh, maintains a natural force on the rod. So, so yeah, it should be just, uh, oh, uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna use this as my value of current I. So it'll be I L B. Part D asks about uh, power at which uh, work is done. And this is actually an interesting comparison. So let me do this uh, totally analytically. 
So the first expression we want is the, the power at which some force does work. So uh, if you think through it, this here, so given a force, you can calculate the amount of uh, work being done. Uh, work is the force that product with the displacement. But when they ask you for the power, uh, power is the rate at which work is done. So something that's conceptually like the time derivative of work. And when you imagine taking time derivative of this, uh, well, force is constant, so it doesn't change. So what you have is the force, the product with the time derivative of this delta x, or I guess delta x over delta t, or if you think more of the instantaneous velocity, then this would be dx dt, oh, and yeah, the velocity, <laughs> dx dt is velocity. So instantaneous rate at which work is being done is the force, the product with the velocity. This is a quite common setup. You might have seen this expression before. If you haven't, here it is. So we would say, okay, so the, the force does work at this rate. The amount of force we calculated above times the velocity. And I can leave it there and, you know, plug in all the numbers. But uh, let me do a little bit more algebra so that you can manifestly see um, what these two quantities, how these two quantities compare. So I'm going to plug in the expression for force, which is ILB, and I'm going to put in plug in the expression for I, which is all this. So doing all that, I have B times B, so it'll be B naught squared times HB over R, that's the current, times B, uh, times L. Okay, so that's uh, the expression for the power at which work is done um, that doesn't seem super <laughs> illuminating let's calculate the power uh, dissipated in the register uh, as you might recall power dissipated in a register is the current squared times r uh, there are other expressions involving voltage and whatnot but here i squared r works well for us so let's just calculate what i squared r is I squared R is equal to uh, this thing squared, B naught squared, H squared, V squared over R squared times R. Hmm. I feel like something is missing. What is, What are we missing? Oh, um. <laughs> I think I know what I'm missing. Um, I'll fix that after I finish this. So um, it's okay. Um, simplifying this I squared R quantity, I, I say I have one factor of R that cancels out two factors of one of the two factors of R here. Okay, so here we have this expression, B naught squared, H squared, V squared over R. Now comparing it here, it's not the same. Um, it's because I made a, two distinct mistakes. One is where I wrote this I L B, this L here, uh, it, which is this length here that already has a symbol H. So instead of ILB, I should have written IHB. Yes, H is L. So making this L equal to that H, it should be H squared and no extra L. Okay. And uh, my V, oh, but this V comes from this V here. I forgot to actually write down this V. So instead of one factor of v, it's v squared. So um, now that I fixed all the mistakes I've made, you can say that the expression here is the same as the expression here. So it, uh, uh, it just works out that way and it'll always work out that way. It's a kind of, this is the amazing thing about conservation of energy principle. It holds. Um, it, 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 you can have complex scenarios and whether you account to the energy input. So I guess uh, the energy that's accounted for here is actually the energy input. Uh, something has to do positive work to keep this rod moving at the same velocity. 
and the energy that we are accounting for here is energy output, energy being lost. And uh, when all the mechanical things have the same energy, energy input is equal to energy output, it's kind of it's surprising and satisfying. So, so let me plug in all the numbers so that I can wrap this up here. Um, so my magnetic field is strength, 0 0.5 times height, uh, let me do that in basic SI units, 0 0.04 times the speed, 3 meters per second. So that will be my voltage. Um, and my magnitude of current is, um, well, I'll just use V R equals 2. So my current is V over R. Um, going to go counterclockwise. And the force that's needed will be the current times um, uh, current times h 0 0.04 times magnetic field 0 0.5 and finally the work done oh I guess I can just do i squared times r I have already proven there they should be numerically equal to each other so I'll just uh, use that to, to fill in both Okay, so let's uh, go plug in those numbers. So 0 0.0018 for both of them. Oh, wait, um, that's in the basic SI unit of watt. So this should be 1.8 milliwatt. Uh, when we put this in the unit that's actually here. Uh, let me put that in as the answer. And I guess I could believe that there, the rest of the answer must have been right for this to all work out. But, you know, I can just plug it in. So V is 0 0.06. Um, current is, uh, so that's in ampere. So this should be 30 milliampere. And we set the counterclockwise. And the uh, force of, and this is in newtons, so for millinewtons, I need to multiply this by 1,000, so 0 0.6 millinewton. So, yeah, that's it.